Welcome to Path to Recovery. I'm April Chapman Thomas, chatting today with Jennifer Lazarus, Tourism Marketing Manager for the City of Gallup, New Mexico. Jennifer, thank you for joining us. Tell us a little thank bit you. about Gallup. So Gallup is 30 miles east of Arizona uh, in New Mexico. We're on I-40 and Route 66. So we're this small town halfway between Albuquerque and Flagstaff that a lot of people encounter and have encountered over the years, um, whether they're doing the Route 66 road trip experience, they're heading west to do, you know, to California or something like that. A lot of people have passed through and um, just haven't noticed that we have a lot of incredible, amazing and beautiful things here. Now you have quite the interesting um, COVID story <laughs> of what's happened in the state and subsequently your destination. Um, let's talk about that. Yeah. So um, we are surrounded entirely by the Navajo Nation and we have Zuni Pueblo neighbors about 45 miles to the south of us. And so one of the things that became apparent pretty quickly in the, in the coronavirus pandemic was that our neighboring communities that had less um, key infrastructure such as water and electricity, which people take for granted, especially in larger municipal areas, um, they were harder hit uh, by the pandemic because there was no, you know, again, missing infrastructure. We had people coming into town. We're considered a border town. So people from our neighboring communities come in to shop um, and they come in to trade. We actually are responsible for 70 to 80 percent of the world's Native American jewelry. The Navajo and Zuni are the largest silversmithing tribes in the U.S. So we are, um, you know, they're coming in here to do business and to supply jewelry and things like that. And what we were finding was they were coming to town and going, what are you talking about pandemic? A month into the pandemic. So precautions and things like that were just really slow going. In addition, um, Navajo homes in particular, actually and Zuni, are, are both multi-generational. So this put us in a unique position where because you have multi-generations of a family living in a home, in a situation, um, you know, we're here on I-40 Route 66 with every convenience and amenity you can imagine, but then you go 40 miles out and it's the true Wild West, um, it put us in a unique position that we had a harder time getting ahead of the pandemic and making sure that the populations of our region were safe. So this meant from May 1st through May 10th, um, we had one of the nation's few lockdowns. We actually closed our municipality from the outside communities because what we didn't want was to act as the, as the fulcrum, as the center point of an infection spread. Uh, because we are the center of essential items, it was a very difficult decision to make um, to close the doors essentially to everybody. But what we didn't want was someone to come to Gallup, go grocery shopping or something like that, and then take it home to that multi-generational home where they were lacking water resources, et cetera. So this, um, McKinley County ended up having the highest rate of COVID infection in the state, and I'm pleased to report we're now one of the lowest. <laughs> um, and we've taken every precaution, but we did close our community for 10 days back in May, which um, had profound national media impacts. How do you balance, how do you delicately balance that as a tourism manager, tourism on one side, but you want to take care of your community on the other side? How yeah, do you know. Oh, sorry. What did you do? What did you do? What did your, you and your office have to do this time? Yeah, we've had a couple things. So my office has actually uh, moved into a role to assist with the mayor of Gallup in making sure that we're getting the message out about COVID safetyness within our community um, and that I have been working really closely with businesses to um, pursue the NM Safe Promise, which is the state's um, safety program that they, you know, you go through the checklist and you verify that you are going to be COVID safe. Um, from a PR standpoint, we made sure that we looked at all the angles and said, okay, we want to make sure our community is safe. We're going to stay close for this period of time. And then when it is safe to reopen, we're going to open in a capacity that leads by example. So when you come to Gallup, we are 100% in masks. I very, very rarely see people um, without a mask on, to be completely candid. Um, I think many people are enjoying the distancing required in the grocery stores. We have one of the top 10 highest grossing Walmarts in the world. And so the fact that you can go to Walmart right now in the pandemic and maybe not bump into so many people, people are enjoying it. Um, so we're leveraging that and saying, you know, our businesses are doing their absolute best to make sure that they're observing these guidelines. 
Um, and we're setting the bar and we have those numbers to back it up. If you look at where we were in the spread and where we are now, um, we are saying we are a safe community. And as more and more services are allowed by our governor, you're welcome here. What was it? How did you work with the businesses during this time? What was the means of communication, reaching out? So it was three phases. Um, the state of New Mexico was actually really generous and gave us a grant um, that audited all of our business community, uh, um, that we, we gave them a list, um, and let us know what their Google listings looked like, if they had websites, if their phone numbers were working. So then um, I started reaching out individually to businesses via email and telephone. And now that we are at, um, within our retail 25% capacity and restaurants, 25 inside, 75 outside, um, I've been doing site visits and actually showing up with a tablet and going over with them how to adequately communicate with the public. What are their hours? What services are they offering? Um, what are the things that are new and different and maybe exciting about their businesses and how can they make sure they get the word out so that a tourist coming to town can know, hey, we are open, we've got these great food specials, here's where you can dine. And so that's one of the things, it's like I said, it's a multi-phased approach between phone, internet, going out into the businesses themselves um, and doing those appointments. We've run some media to try to encourage the businesses to contact my department so that we can work together to make sure that the public is fully aware of, of the great things they offer. How has marketing pivoted? How do you market Gallup now? So <laughs> we have the We're Open campaign. <laughs> you know, right now, um, if you look at the traveler journey, we're in, we are solely living in the inspiration phase. You know, we, we would love people to be in the inspiration phase of their trip and then, you know, planning and booking of their trip phase. We're not actively inviting into our community. We're not saying you're not welcome. What we're saying is we're open. Should you come by? That's great. <laughs> um, and then over the next year, we've got a plan in place that as we can get back into inviting people regularly and actually doing that call to action, come see this come do this. Um, we will 100% do that. But right now, like if you can look at my background, so this is a shot from the Red Rock Balloon Rally. Um, this event takes place in December of every year. Um, as you can see, it's clearly outside. Um, it is the second largest balloon rally in the United States, but we like to say the most beautiful one. <laughs> um, and this is in our beautiful Red Rocks here. Um, you know, it's events like this that we believe will be a really great catalyst for jumpstarting that tourism economy when it's safe to travel. And do you think that's a benefit? Because you do have a lot of outdoor. Right? We do. And I think that's a tremendous benefit. And in fact, um, it actually leverages your question before about marketing. We're um, working closely with the state. They've been a really excellent partner with regard to helping create um, recovery readiness materials. We're one of the first city they're coming out and they're helping us do some photography, some short video and things like that, that show people our unique assets. And the discussion was, People have no idea. I have 30 miles of hiking trails through the beautiful Red Rocks, it's hiking and biking. We have a climbing area. You know, we have these gorgeous hot air balloons and people miss it because it's four exits off of I-40. So that's been a very exciting result of this pandemic is to go, hey, in case you missed it before, we're hiding in plain sight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like, looking back, I mean, is there anything you had done differently? Um, you know, I think I would have preferred if as we went through this experience, um, we had had more messaging in terms of video content. I think the public has been so inundated with articles, with quick little GIF images or Instagram shots, you know, that I think everybody in this country has seen the CDC wash your hands image. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we would, I would have loved to have had more time to, you know, go back in and do more videos about what is safe to do in our community as we go. And we're going to start doing more of that now, but I think um, when it all hit to have those messages of reassurance um, from our municipal leaders or county leaders or other community organizations that we're working together, just to tell the public, while what you're seeing on the international media is daunting, it's not raining COVID from the skies. Like, we, we, had, we had six cases yesterday and two days before that we had a case in the entire county of 70,000 people. So we're doing everything we can to be safe and I would have loved to have been like, this is who we are and this is how we're taking care of each other so that we can take care of you in the future. What have you learned from all of this? <laughs> I've 
personally, I've learned that I'm, I'm really adaptable because <laughs> um, I never expected that I would perform in a tourism capacity. And then um, the unofficial official title that the city manager has given me is the COVID communications coordinator. I've written every press release. I've been in the thick of it, um, been in the discussions, helped write our CARES Act to the state. Um, that versatility, though, I'm really grateful for because I think it'll pay off in the long term when I am working to reach out to tour operators, FIT, other, just, you know, your regular transient travel to say, you know, we're safe and here's all these things because I've been on both sides of it. I'm not just coming at it from here's what's great about our destination and here's how we're safe. It's I literally was in every meeting about the numbers and the, you know, the actions that we chose to take as a community and getting that word out. I wrote those press releases or did that video so that when I'm having those conversations with people, I feel really prepared to talk to them about why they should come now. Well, as we wrap up this um, chat, what advice would you give to those in others in the industry, maybe going through the same things or something similar? My advice, and this is something that we've been talking a lot about lately, is do not, of course we all had to cut our budgets, there's no question, but my advice as one of the hardest hit communities is don't stop telling people who you are and what makes you great. Um, I think it's really easy to get lost in the messaging of safety um, and preparedness, and there's so much of that. You know, we're getting emails from corporations saying, here's what we're doing to keep you safe. So if, if all you're seeing is, here's what we're doing, here's what we're doing, we lose who we are and what makes us special because we don't have that time to make up in another year or two as our industry hopefully is rebounding. Um, I, you know, we still need to get that message out there. We're putting billboards up that say, you know, we're open with great images of our businesses and we're going to continue to leverage that to show people, you know, we're open we believe that you're going to do what you need to do to stay safe and we're going to do what we're going to do to stay safe. You don't need to hear from us the 50 ways to stay safe. You need to hear from us that these balloons should be on your bucket list and you need to come flying one. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it.